G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the west side of the map, we've got Liquid De Muslim. Not just any De Muslim, but Liquid De Muslim. He's going to be playing the Holy Roman Empire and he is going to be playing in the color blue. I'm looking forward to seeing what he's got. So for anybody unfamiliar with De Muslim, he participated at N4C. A bit of a titan when it comes to the Age of Empire. Well, not just the Age community, but rather the RTS community. I'll leave a link in the description over to his Twitch page where you can catch him live, watch some of his games that he's playing exactly like this one but over on the other side of the map spawning in on the east we've got core who is playing as the red chinese and i'm looking forward to seeing what he's got in store for us today because this map obviously negari it is a map that is uh i guess i'd say a little bit infamous at the moment all of these uh hybrid maps are somewhat infamous people don't really well, they're not interested in really playing them, I guess is probably the best thing. It's it's very common that you're going to experience. If, if you queue up right now and quick match and you get Nagari, I'd say probably like an 80% chance that the enemy will dodge for you. Uh, so that, that's my current experience. So it looks like these two players, not neither of them dodged. So Core nor De Muslim going to be dodging here. Now, Core ranked outside the top 100 at the moment. Still considered a very good player. I actually met Core uh, in Berlin. Uh, I think we actually shared a, uh, a curry roast together as well, which makes us... I think it actually qualifies us as best friends. Anybody that you've shared a curry worst with, you can call them a best friend. So I've got two best friends in this game. I'm excited to see how it goes. So one of the other things that happened at uh, N4C was that De Muslim announced uh, together with Li Team Liquid that they'd be partnering up. So very exciting to see. And that's for the Age of Empires 4 scene that they are partnering up, which it's a good thing. It means there's, there's a little bit more credibility with regard to the Age of Empires scene now uh, as a competitive scene because Team Liquid have had said, hey, we're going to sign up to Muslim. And uh, and why the heck not? What a great sign for them. He's currently sitting at rank number seven on the ladder, a very strong contender. Uh, and also heading into Golden League, he is looking to be one of the favorites. So for anybody unfamiliar with Golden League, you guys might remember EGC TV over from, uh, from Genesis, the very first Age of Empires 4 tournament, or from... You know, all the other stuff that they did in AoE 3, if you're a long-time fan, then uh, you'll remember EGC TV from that. So he is doing, or, or rather EGC TV is doing, uh, a 125,000 Golden League tournament. Uh, and it's going to feature a lot of interesting uh, formats uh, for players. So the first round is going to be happening this weekend. Uh, and it is going to be pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be Open Battlefields. Is uh, If I remember correctly, I believe that's what it's called. Open Battlefields. So all the maps are going to be open. So you're not going to have maps like Nagari. You can see this is quite a closed off map. Very easy to wall. You're going to have maps like uh, Lipany, maps like uh, Dry Arabia, and of course maps like Highview. It's going to be those open style maps uh, and uh, players will have to pick their civilizations based or around that. Uh, but now it looks like we've got a little bit of action. Core going to be harassing the villager of the Muslim. Now, one of the interesting things, I remember watching a game between, I want to say it was... Um, Oh, this is going to be tough. Lucifron and... I don't remember who the second player was, but it was a Holy Roman Empire mirror, and it was on uh, Danube River. And one of the players went for a boat boom or an early uh, a Dark Age fishing boom like this, and Lucifron didn't. He just went for a blanket... Well, not a blanket, but, you know, like a stock standard uh, boat or a stock standard age or fast castle. Uh, and so what he did is he actually just, you know, trained three prelates, sent them all out to the relics and took all the relics before his enemy. And he had three. Oh, oh that villager might go down. That village is probably going to go down. Oh, down she goes. He's going to lose the scout for it. So, I mean, relatively fair trade when you think about it. Scout obviously going to cost, uh, you know, it's a town center train time all that sort of stuff um but unfortunate that he does lose that uh that villager just at the last second um but yeah uh, essentially well, there's be beautiful ark and chapel coming through right here as well gonna hit gold berries uh woodline and uh and the uh and the sheep on the tc so very good and here's the second woodline as well oh my god can i get a craigasm Jeez, louise that is just oof that is that is very very juicy i mean other than like the deer being in there this is just never gonna happen but um yeah very very beautiful but yeah um interestingly you do get up a little bit slower but already we've got core coming in with some sneaky shenanigans gonna be dropping down for villages with the barbican of the sun in the middle so it's actually quicker to get up to the next age if you ignore or quicker to get up to castle age if you ignore the fishing boats uh, as the holy roman empire so we'll see how the timing is for the muslim because it's not going to be pretty let's just put it that way obviously the muslim going to be having a bit of a struggle over on this side of the map with core just putting down a barbican 
quite literally in his face. In his face. But now you can see that Core is uh, on seven fishing boats at the moment. He's obviously got that age up coming through. Whereas the Muslims just stopped making fishing boats. So I'm wondering whether this is just like, you know, he, he probably realizes, okay, it's not going to happen. But I got to say, it's a pretty smart move coming out here from Core. And this is kind of like next level China strategies. And now you can see the Muslim moving to the other side. Also going to be dropping a dock down here. We can see that on the other side. So we've got the junk coming out from Core. Uh, so I'd be curious to see whether we have a galley come out here from the Muslim as well. You can see he's invested quite a, a bit heavily in wood gathering. Obviously, yet to grab either of those upgrades because they're quite expensive. Um, but he's going to be looking to focus on probably getting that in. And now, obviously, Core is going to be spotting this out and already putting the Muslim on the back foot. So coming into this game, you know, we didn't really talk much about the matchup, but I will say right now, Holy Roman Empire is incredibly favored in this matchup. Obviously, the Muslim uh, also significantly higher rated. So a little bit of an upset already coming through here from Core. Uh, when it comes to the higher levels in the, in the ladder, I think really it just comes down to consistency between these players. So I would say Core and the Muslim would be very close with regard to skill. Uh, the main difference would be that Demuslim is just a little bit more consistent than Core and enables him to get up there. Obviously, Demuslim's also got, you know, he's, he's, he's got a, a lot of stamina when it comes to this kind of stuff. He's been doing it for a fair long time. And now we actually see the junk. Gonna be trying to fire off, but Galley gonna be coming out shortly. Uh, gonna be able to do a fair bit of damage. You can see he's walled up the relics down towards the south as well. Picks up a wolf on his way. Uh, and at the same time, scout up towards the north. Still no walls on these relics just yet. A second dock gonna be coming in on the other side and now chasing. Is he chasing away? What's he doing? He's, he's evacuating the dance floor. He's heading up to the other dock as he continues to siege down this position. And we see a galley coming out now from the north dock also for the Muslim. So the Muslim gonna be outnumbering uh, the junk. And so just when you thought that the Muslim was looking like he might be in a bit of trouble. Barbican going to be firing down, but uh, the Muslim manages to actually have a pretty safe side over the over on this uh, over on this angle. So it, it's interesting how the swings happen, how, how the turns table in this position, because uh, now you can see that the junk going to be pushed up in between a rock and a hard place. Uh, probably not really put. I guess, I guess you know what we can say like these guys are the hard place. That's the rock right there. But the junk does manage to survive. <laughs> he looks like he's got intentions of death. Uh, but uh, we'll check and see with uh, with the Muslim. See what he's up to. Doesn't look like he's going to be even close to the castle age at this point in time. So really just focusing on winning over this pond in the middle. And I really don't think it's something that's going to be viable. I don't. I think you're always going to have a potential threat from this position. You can see an outpost getting thrown down here as well. I feel like it's almost a little bit of overkill with this outpost. Um, but I'd, I'd love to. See see a little bit more proactive walls coming out from core at this point we already saw walls down on the relics to the south relics in this position you can see the villager which is on 29 health at this point obviously has taken out the uh wolves uh, but he's going to continue to wall those bad boys up and we actually do see the proactive wall come through this is exactly what i wanted to see I ideally we'd even see a stone wall behind this as well that would really stuff him up and he's got to be careful not to not to put it in the wrong position you can see that the wall does manage to come across but there's a little bit of a way through on this back line so if he walls to this position here with stone, uh, he, there will be a hole. So just always, you got to be so careful of that. But Core looking very good. We could have an upset on our hands right now. And you can see that one of the issues that's happening right now, the Muslim obviously comes into this game. He needs to be, th he's, he's obviously thinking about his win condition. What is his win condition? Well, he, he wants to get to Imperial. Uh, that, that's the big thing. He wants to get the Villager printer. That's it. He wants to get the Palace of Sabia. Um, and what he's doing at the moment, obviously he's being distracted. He is being forced to fight in the Feudal Age for water. And Kor kind of looks content just sitting back here with his Barbican, sitting with his single junk. Like he hasn't invested in any more with that junk and he's heading up to the castle age very very shortly you can see and it's only a matter of time i would suspect until he actually looks to take full control here i wouldn't be surprised if we do see stone walls coming up um and i really wouldn't be surprised if we see like a forward monastery come out where he just rallies uh the monks to each of these relics and then sends them back to his base for safekeeping uh when it comes to the spawn of these relics you've got the two down to the south you've got one two three up on the north side so he has been completely walled out but when it comes to game plan like i mean realistically core has come into this game and he's actually just really done very well. Remember that this is a tip. This is a very difficult matchup to win as as the Chinese. Uh, but at the same time, you know he's thought ahead and done very well. Now you can see that the Muslim is actually managing to get up to the next age. So has he dropped a market? How did he get the resources to age up so quickly? I'm impressed. There's no market. There's a trading post. I'm I must be blind or something. Where did he get that extra resource from? Uh, perhaps he, he just cancelled. I think he might have had a couple of uh, a galley or two in here. And maybe he's just decided not to commit to water as much. And that's the correct play. Ideally, 
you would just want to do exactly what he's done. I think it's the correct play uh, in this position. But now I think he's going to realize that he might be in a bit of trouble because he spots the dock out up towards the north. So he knows more fishing is happening up over on this position that he can't control. He can always try and get up there. But now we see prelates moving out across the map. You can see the scout's going to pick it up as well. So it's only a matter of time until that scout is able to take down that prelate. That prelate going to continue moving down towards this position. But you and I both know a little bit of a secret. He's not getting that relic. There is no way he's getting his hands on that bad boy at all. Even the safest relic down in this position has been taken. Both players reaching the castle age within a second of each other. Uh, where did that prelate go? Prelate's going to keep going down on that way. We'll tune in on the other position. The Muslim here thinking is very happy. You know, he's managed to get up to the castle age at the same time as his enemy. He's held water. He's done everything right, but... Bow, 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 bow. We'll take a look at the perspective. I'd, I'd love to get like a real-time look at the Muslim's face when this happens. And in fact, if you would like to have a, a real-time look at his face as well, as he spots the wall on the prelate on the relic and sees the second one as well, uh, you make sure you check out his Twitch stream. As I said, I'll leave a link in the description where you can go and watch him live. He's probably live right now. Uh, typically, when I watch him, he's got a, a huge amount of viewers. So you, you, I'd encourage you guys go join, go check him out. He's uh, he's a quality uh, creator. And uh, he is seeming to struggle quite a bit here because now uh, the tables haven't really turned in this middle pond. He's obviously still fishing at this point, but the main issue is even though he's got all this fish, he doesn't have the relics and that's really going to hurt him. And now he's going to be able to get relics. The, the problem is that it's going to take time and his enemy might get them before he does. Uh, but now it looks like that uh, the Muslim trying his best to break through these walls going to be adding in a knight up to the north and you can see the stables that have gone down he is very serious about adding in these units and actually has a pretty decent economy you can have a look now how many villages he's added in any wheelbarrow yes he has got his wheelbarrow as well so he's going to be getting extra effective um resource gathering manages to make it i wouldn't say this is necessarily a mistake but it's it's not yeah it's unfortunate uh, but now you see those prelates trying to break or, tr or rather you see the uh the knights trying to break through prelates up here ready to go he knows that those relics aren't aren't uh walled in so he's gonna be trying his best but remember we talked about this a little bit earlier there's a bit of a gap up here let's see if the muslim spots that one out because it could very quickly uh turn the tides and now down towards the south the muslim gonna get an alert that his enemy is capturing the sacred site he, the monk walks past it it's only gonna be a matter of time until he's down there stone walls coming up we talked about this they managed to break through they're gonna be on the other side prelate's gonna be coming straight through it could be the mistake that actually ruins the game right now for core as these knights are gonna be breaking through you can see they've got a huge amount of damage on them no upgrades coming through just yet he's really going to make sure that he protects this position here because if this stone wall does get up he's going to be in a terrible spot but you can see all the knights now beginning to move forward ideally he needs to kill these villagers sooner rather than later i can't believe that he actually managed to punish him through this one position right here the stone walls did come up but a little bit of a mistake and now up towards the north it looks like the prelates do make it through all of the relics have been actually been snatched up on this side you can see more relics up towards the north the other relics so it looks like one of those relics is going to be able to to be kept sacred site also getting captured so he's going to be able to sit on 400 gold as his trickle and now we see big walls coming through for core he is looking to really play defensive in this late game and look to try and get up a little bit uh maybe even look to go to the imperial age you can see the muslim stacking up a lot of resources here he's going to continue pushing out now maybe down towards the barbican maybe towards the base of his enemy but at the same time he would know you you can see on the minimap when these relics disappear he would know that there's still a second relic down there but at the same time village is now moving down towards the gold mine he's going to have to look to siege down this position siege down this relic so we'll see how he plays it as these knights continue moving across the map the muslim looking in absolute form right now if he breaks through these walls i think core might just be over because he can just march straight through into this he's got all of the villagers on the front line here looking to actually get this down but at the same time on the, on, in, in the middle of the map all of the all of the villagers have been lost out now 51 villagers at the moment for core 43 for the muslim the muslim has lost the middle all while this is happening so all of the war junks just coming out a huge amount four war junks it's a massive investment and now lance is coming through as well the muslim not looking in the prettiest of spots he's going to be able to break through the wall the wallalo comes through he manages to snipe out the uh, the warrior monk that relic is going to be sitting on the ground so he could potentially look to pick that one up second one coming in he's going for the charge now he's looking to connect he manages to connect it third one there is there a third one he's going to be able to get into the wood line if he gets into the wood line call ggs he says no thank you i don't want it you don't want it we don't want it let's go 
Wow, what a game. What a very interesting game. That was a very, very action-packed game all over the place. I didn't know what way that was going to end at all. Incredible stuff. Fellas, if you're interested in seeing more Demuslim, make sure you go check him out. I'll leave a link in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one.